Hi everyone, in this video we'll learn how to calculate and code out the mean, median, and mode within Python. Before we get started, let's review the packages we'll use. These include matplotlib, plotly, numpy, and statistics. Before we get into our calculations, let's review what descriptive statistics is. This involves summarizing and organizing data. The data analyzed by descriptive statistics is usually a sample of a population of data. For example, if we have five years of daily training data for Apple, we know that Apple has been around for decades. The five years is a subset of the total population of data. Measures such as the mean, median, and mode describe the data. The data can also be summarized visually with graphs such as histograms. The mean, median, and mode calculations are related to central tendency. A measure of central tendency is a summary measure that attempts to describe a whole set of data with a single value that represents the middle or center of its distribution. Measures of central tendency estimate the typical value in a data set. We'll see this visually within histograms. Let's set up a scenario where we are going to take a look at and try to summarize the central tendency of housing prices within a certain neighborhood. We have a data set of 91 houses that were sold over a past year Assuming that the houses are relatively similar, we want to purchase a house for ourselves, but we want to get an idea of what the average price, the median price, and the mode or the selling price that comes out most often is. We'll first start with mean or average. When people talk about mean, they are usually talking about the arithmetic average. We will see that when a data set is symmetrically distributed, approximating a bell-shaped curve, then the mean can be a reliable tool to understand the central tendency of the data set. However, if there are outliers within the data set, this can skew the data set and skew the mean to a certain side. We'll get into this later in the video. Here we have the formula for the mean. Don't be put off by the symbols. This is relatively easy to read once you get into it. What this is saying is that we are going to sum over all of the data points within a data set. N is the total number of data points, and Y is the specific data point at the index point here. So for example, if we have three data points within mathematical notation, I might start at one and go up to three. So one, two, three, these are the index positions of those data points. What we do is that we sum over or add all those together, and then we divide it by the total number of data points, which is three, and we have the arithmetic mean. Let's actually code out a function, and a function is going to give us a re reproducible calculation of the mean. What I'll do is I'll start by creating it. We need to start by typing in def, and we need to name our function. I'm going to call this mean calc for mean calculation, and it is going to take one input. The input is going to be a list or array, and it is going to be a certain data set that we pass into the function. And what we want to return is the mean. Like before, we are going to sum over all the data points. We can use Python's sum function to do this. And then what we do is we divide by the total number of data points. And the way that we get the total number of data points within Python is we are going to return the length of the passed in list or data set. Let's run this. And we have the housing prices here within our data set. So we have this already hard coded out. And we are also going to check that we actually have 91 data points here. Let's run this. So we do have 91 data points. What we want to do is we want to check that we coded this out correctly. What we can do is we can check our function against NumPy's built in mean function. What I'll do is I am going to print the comparison between our function and NumPy. And when we want to compare two values, we use this operator function here. And it looks like we did code this out correctly where our mean calculation is the same as the mean for NumPy. What I also want to do is I want to save this into a variable. I'll call it mean house price. Let's graph out our data in a histogram. Here we have our histogram. 
on the x-axis, we have the values at which the houses were sold from roughly 115,000 to right about $400,000. And these bins are the number of houses that were sold within a certain range. So from the 115,000 to the 135,000 mark, we have six houses that were sold. And then from the 135,000 up to the 160,000, we have roughly 10 that were sold. We could see the average price for a household was $211,233. We can also see that the data is not symmetric, meaning that we have more bins on the more expensive side of the houses that were sold rather than on the cheaper side. We can also see that we have an outlier here at the $400,000 mark where this bin is breaks away from the rest of the distribution which skews the data positively. If we had more bins on the left-hand side, this would be a negative skew, meaning more houses were sold cheaply relative to expensive sell selling prices for the houses. If the data set were symmetric, then we would have roughly an even number of houses sold on both the cheaper side and more expensive side. Now that we've calculated the mean, we are going to move on to the median. The median is the middle number of a data set, if the number of data points is odd. It is found by ordering all data points and picking out the one in the middle. If there are two middle numbers, meaning the number of data points is even within the data set, then median is calculated by taking the mean of those two numbers. If the data set is skewed, meaning it's non-symmetric, like our data set, the medium is a better indicator of central tendency relative to the mean. Here we have the formula for this, and it's just describing what we said here. If we have the data set and the number of data points is odd, what we do is we simply take the middle number, so it's n plus 1 divided by 2. Then if it's even, what we do is we take the average of those two middle numbers. Let's work on coding this out. Like before, we are going to create another function. This time we'll call it medium calc. And it is going to take the same input, a data set of a list or an array. And what we are going to do first is we are going to save a variable that sorts the data. So we need our data sorted in order to calculate the median. We can use the sorted function to sort the data set. And just to make sure that it is in list format and not a NumPy array, we are going to save it as a list as well. Next, what we are going to do is we need the length of the data set. So I am going to create another variable called data set length, and it is just going to calculate the length of our data set. Now that we have those, what we'll do is we have a if else statement. What I also want to account for is if we just have one element or one number within our data set. So if the data set length is equal to one, then I am just going to return the number itself within the data set. And what this does is if we have the data set and it only has one number, we are going to access that element using, using indexing. Keep in mind that when we are indexing in computer science, every the index starts at zero. So we are just going to get the first element and that is going to be the median of our data set. Next, what I want to do is I want to check if the data set is odd. So I'm going to take the data set length and I'm going to use the modulo operator two. And I'm, what I'm going to say is, if the data set length modulo two is not equal to zero, meaning it's odd, then I want to run this calculation here. So what we'll do here is we're going to take the data set length divided by two to get the middle of it. And when we do that, if we have the data set as three, for instance, so we have three numbers and we divide that by two, we have a floating point number. We need to pass in a integer. And if we convert it to an integer using the int, then we have it. And this is the number that we want to. So when we use int, it will round down. So if we have three elements or three numbers in a list, then it is going to return the correct position. 
So we don't need to do the n plus one because this is the mathematical notation, but in computer science, we'll start at zero, one, two. So when we return position one in a data set of length three, this returns the middle. Then I need another else statement. So if our data set is more than, has more than one data point, if it's even, then what we need to do is we need to take the average of the two. So we'll do that by taking the sorted data at n minus one. So the two middle numbers, and we add those together, and then we will get the median by taking the average of those two. And then what we finally want to do is we want to return the median itself. And like before, what we could do is we can take the median calculation that we made here and compare that to NumPy's built-in median calculation to make sure it's correct. Okay, looks like we cut it out correctly. And like before, I want to save the median house price into a variable called median house price. And we can see that the average and median are slightly different from each other. So uh, the central tendency tends to be a little lower because the average is skewed because of the positive skew. And we have this outlier and all these other expensive houses that skew the data towards the right or make the skew positive. So that is why the median house price is less than the average house price. Now that we know the average house price and the median house price, we also want to know the mode or what is the selling house price that we see most often in the data set. And the mode, again, is the most commonly occurring value in a distribution. The mode can only be calculated for a data set that contains discrete values. We have discrete values within our housing prices, not continuous, so we can calculate the mode. What we'll do is we are going to create another function and we are going to call it mode calc. And like before, it is going to take data set as the input. What we are going to do is we are going to return the max value or the most frequent value. The way that we'll do this is we are going to take the data set and turn it into a set. So what when we do this, this create this returns only the unique values. This gets rid of the duplicates. Next, what we want to do is we want to input a key. So in this case, we want to tell how max how we want it to return the number that we want. What we'll do is we are going to take that same data set and we are going to return it by the count. So it is going to count all of the numbers within the set and return the most frequent number. This time we will use the statistics package to make sure that we calculated the mode calculation correctly. What I also want to do is I want to plot this out using both Plotly and Matplotlib. And what I'm going to do is I am going to save the unique heights into a list. And I am also going to save the height counts and we will plot it out. And we can see here that we have the mode. So the mode price is $204,779. That is the sale price that we see most often within the data set. And for the majority of the houses, we can see that we only have one count and then we have two counts for these. And what we'll do is we are actually going to describe the data now. So like I said earlier, the data set is non-symmetric, meaning that it is skewed to a certain side. If it were symmetric, then it would mirror itself if we cut the data in half and flipped it over. In our case, the data set is positively skewed or skewed to the right, where the mean is greater than the median and the median is greater than the mode, telling us the housing prices are skewing to the more expensive part of the range. And we can see this within Matplotlib. And we can see the mode is less than the median, which is less than the mean. And it goes back to the, we have a lot of expensive houses that are selling and that the outlier here is also affecting the mean price of the houses. What we do need to be careful of is that this is a simple descriptive statistic. This doesn't get into inference, which tries to model or 
predict a process. We only have a snapshot of a house price of all these house prices at a certain point in time, but house prices tend to be dynamic and time varying, meaning that they will change over time. Right now, it seems like the houses are expensive, but what could be happening is that the house prices are starting to slowly fall and we're just seeing old prices here and these are newer prices. So what we'll look at is our second scenario where we are going to look at the same neighborhood, but with the future prices. So this is, these are the house prices sometime in the future. And we can see that they, we, they've fallen significantly. So the average house price went from $211,000 to $160,978. And the median and mode also fell as well. What we can also see is that the data set isn't as skewed as it was, and it's more sy symmetric having a bell shape. So if we cut it in half and flipped it on the other side, it would roughly mirror itself, or it would at least mirror itself better than the previous distribution. And this is the tricky part when it comes to descriptive statistics. It can give you an idea of the data at a certain point in time, you can understand the distribution, but it is simple at the end of the day, and you need to run a lot more analysis in order to truly understand the data. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope that this video was helpful. I have a bunch of references that you can check out here from videos such as Khan Academy's statistics intro series to various websites that I use to create the notebook. If you like the video, feel free to like and subscribe. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, GitHub, and Odyssey. Thanks again, everybody, for watching, and happy coding.